So today I want to talk about picking a new colour scheme and working out how it's going to work for you and the army that you want to make. So I'm just going to jump straight into it, how I picked the colour scheme that I wanted to do, a couple of the reasons that I did that, and then try and sort of draw out an example of why. I think it's really important when we're considering model painting that we consider the whole model. I think something that I've definitely made the mistake of in the past is I pick a really cool colour scheme for the body and then have no clue what kind of base it's going to go on. So the first thing that I want to think about is I want to make sure that my base in whatever colour scheme I end up picking is a part of the totality. If my model is coloured a certain way, my base has to be coloured a certain way as well. To give you a really great example of why this is important, I'm just going to put up an image of some of my Necrons. Here you can see that although I do think the bodies themselves, at least for an army for a tabletop game, are okay painted, I think the weapons are pretty cool and the shoulder pads sort of work and there are plenty of videos on my channel discussing that, but because the bases are red, they often on a tabletop end up kind of desaturating the red weapons. The weapons themselves don't stand out any great deal. Yes, they're quite vibrant and there's a lot going on, but the bases are very rich and the tones are almost exactly the same. And it means that it doesn't stand, it doesn't pop properly. So that's something that we need to consider. When picking colours, we often see people talk about the colour wheel and there's a really good reason as to why. Under flat lighting, it's a really, really good way to make things sort of contrast with each other very well and to produce that contrast. We shouldn't completely forget that, but I think often when people talk about the colour wheel, they forget some of the basics of arts like photography, right? One of the ways in which photography is a very interesting art is that what you are really controlling and messing with is light itself. An image taken at one time of day under one set of lighting is going to look completely different than an image taken at a different time of day under a different lighting in the same place. What you need to be doing, or at least what I think I need to be doing with my armies, is when I'm building colour schemes, they should look good under different lighting conditions as well. A really simple way to do this, and anyone that's done any kind of photo editing will be able to tell you this, is actually by thinking about saturation. So as well as thinking about colours that we might pick, we also want to think about saturation. We want the parts of the models that should really stand out, that should really punch, being very saturated and everything else being very desaturated. This means that when lighting conditions change, those colours, as they will change under those different lights, will remain to still look pretty good. The final thing that we want to be thinking about is warmth. One of the nice things of using the colour wheel method is it will vaguely keep you to this as half of the wheel is cold and half of the wheel is warm. But warmth and cold colours when mixed together create an increased contrast and it's an increased contrast that works well under different lights. So as well as saturation and the colours that we end up picking, we also need to be thinking about warmth. So separate to the colour scheme that we might pick, the final thing of note is that I'm painting Tyranids, right? They come with their own kind of constraints. The reason they come with constraints is because there's going to be a lot of them when we're done. I mean, I've got two copies of Leviathan to get through and my wife bought me a non-emissary, so I should probably do something with that at some point. You know, it's a huge range of models. The second thing to think about with Tyranids, obviously, is you have some models which are huge and some models which are quite small. So we're also gonna want a scheme that can work really, really well on very, very small models, as well as very, very large ones. Keeping that all in mind, I think the obvious choice is to try and make the skins as quick and easy to do as possible and preferably be quite desaturated. Then the carapaces and things like that should be quite saturated. I also think the saturated element should be quite warm and then that should quite naturally, depending on the lighting, give the skin a bit more of a cool feel to it. And then the bases themselves can be quite cold. So what I've gone for 
is I think I'm going to go for a very desaturated blue on the bases, kind of a grayscale skin, and then something kind of warm. So I'm thinking pinks, purples, reds, and oranges in particular to punch up as much as I can on that saturation front. So you can think color wheel, obviously orange and blue are separate. So at their extreme, they will be very contrasting on the color wheel. They will be warm, they will be cold, but because of our saturation differences, the blues will be quite muted, whereas the reds should be quite strong. And it should make those reds really stand out and also stand out in lots of different environments. So you can see here that the skins are very grayscale. There is actually a Tyranid High Fleet called Kronos that does have this scheme, although I'm going to be slightly differing from it because I want to be using colours that are very similar to red but slightly different. So I'll be using purples, whereas they typically use a little bit of blues on those Kronos nids instead. For the bases, my first pick here about what to do was really to pick something that just looked different from my other models. So you can see here that what I'm getting is a bunch of sprue off cuts, some old wire from um, a watch charger that disintegrated on me the other week, and some sort of foam corey bits. Just sticking them all down, trying to create sort of pipes and rivets and things like that. As I end up really happy with the final result, I will be trying to get hold of some plaster card with some texture on it so that I can do this a bit cleaner than I think it ends up here. But this is a really great way to add to these bases. And honestly, these bases cost me zero pounds whatsoever. These were all off cuts. All of the foam core relates to stuff to do with the board build that never ended up on the channel, but I'm hoping to do something with it at some point. The wiring and sprue is all just rubbish. This would have been going in the bin, it would have been waste, and now with a very limited amount of cleanup, it can sit on these bases and become part of the texture of this army as it goes forwards. As I knew I wanted some mix of reds and purples and things like that, as I started building up the carapaces, I went for what I would consider actually quite a purpley red as the base, and that's corn red. It is a beautiful, deep, dark red, but it does lean ever so slightly towards purple, which I'm hoping means that it can look vaguely similar to the purples that we're going to be using in other places. Building this carapace up was a really fun thing to do as well. So I've never really painted Tyranids out of one experience that I had with a friend recently that was on the channel. They're not really an army that I've spent very much time with. And building up these reds was just so much fun. The texture on these models is amazing. I know lots of people have been praising the new nids for that reason, but I think even remembering back to when I painted nids recently with a friend, even those had a very similar feel to them. Dare I say it, it almost paints itself as you start blending up. And here I actually used a technique that I usually don't enjoy using that much, which is glazing, to build up that color contrast getting really, really watered down colors and building up layer on layer on layer on layer. But the process was actually quite quick, given that those layers can be applied very quickly one after the other, and given that the amount of space that you cover is a smaller and smaller and smaller each time, the process actually went really quickly, despite me usually absolutely hating that style of painting, because I find it very slow and I don't get much out of it. I really enjoyed it here, it was good fun. For the purples I sort of had two strategies. One of them was the Duncan Rhodes purple through pink three colour set. I've talked about this on the channel a million and one times already but I really love this set and it's really easy as well to punch the pink brighter if you ever need to. So for larger models we can make it even more distinctive and strong. But for here, just using the purples was perfectly fine. The nice thing with that though, is it sings beautifully well with some of Citadel Contrast. So the color Volupus Pink, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, painted over a previously dry brushed grayscale, produces incredibly similar tones. 
I actually think using both is a really good idea, despite the fact that they end up in a slightly different place. The reason for that is because the contrast method produces a lot more internal variation. You have a lot less control as a painter over where those highlights appear and how the darks get presented. I think that's actually a really good thing because it stops us interjecting when things start looking unnatural. Then when we want a bit more clarity, when we want to control where the brightness is, when we want a lot more ability just to touch up, just to touch here and there and really make sure that the lines are exactly where we want them to be, then we use the straight acrylics from Duncan Rhodes and they work brilliantly because you can control those colors excellently on any of the kind of hard weapons. So I'm thinking here sort of the talons, the blades that raise out of some models' heads, things like that. It produces really clean lines that again ends up in exactly the same sort of tonal variety as that contrast over the grayscale does when using Volupus Pink. The eyes were simple, I just wanted them to stand out. So there's just a small dot of an incredibly bright orange and then a little bit of yellow in there just to kind of make them sing a little bit and just to give a bit of tonal variety. But I'm not looking to do anything more than that. So for the bases, I want them really desaturated. I don't want them to overshadow the model that sat on top of them. So what I went for here was actually a mix of about four different contrast paints in the end. Um, plus I painted some bronze colour over some of the pipes and then I used Black Legion Wash just to kind of get into those crevices, Rattling Grime over everything, Talazart Blue and then Space Wolf's Grey all over the top and then I just went in with a really quick dry brush using Vallejo's Gunmetal Airbrush which I'm using for dry brushing at the moment and I think is a much better dry brush paint than almost anything I've ever come across. Works beautifully and so collectively that just built up a lot of sort of dark desaturated tones and then the metal just knocks everything back to be vaguely similar. I think there's room for improvement on these bases but I do quite like them. And yeah, I really like these guys. They read really clearly. I think the different colours between the warmth, the very desaturated and the cool means that the model pops quite nicely. I paint under very bright lights because I think that gives me a better understanding of what's going on. But I've left these out on our dining room table for a couple of days just to check I was happy with them and I've seen them in sort of, you know, the dark night as I'm turning things off before going to bed. I've also seen them, you know, under quite warm lighting, which I do have from sort of the main lights in this room. And under a bunch of different lighting conditions, they read properly. By keeping those ideas in mind, we were able to make sure that our scheme worked in a certain way. Now, it's not a perfect Kronos. I'm not saying that it is. The blades should be bright blue if it was. So yeah, I came up with the scheme way before I knew about that high fleet. And now, sitting here, I think I've accidentally lucked into the best one. It's really cool. It fights warp entities and other high fleets like leave it scraps to feast on so that it stays strong enough to fight those entities. So it fights things for which it's not gonna get flesh. That's fascinating. I think for any Tyranid scheme, there are kind of two challenges that must follow an initial experiment. The first is obviously, can I paint 20 termagants without going completely balmy? That's gonna be the next Tyranid thing. And then finally, can I paint something big and can it look really impressive and really stand out in this scheme? I'm quite confident that I'll be able to do both of those for this, but given that I've said on the channel I want to be building combat patrols, this seems like a really great experiment. These four models all slot into the combat patrol. So if I do those termagants and rippers, I'll be most of the way there. Then 
the huge big monster that I can't remember the name of. Uh, that will follow. Anyway, I've been Hannes. This is how I picked my new paint scheme and discovered a brand new law love I didn't realise I had. It was a really fun project, it felt really liberating, it was nice to put some of my knowledge from photography to use here and there, um, and I would really recommend those principles. Colour wheel, saturation, warmth and cold. If you keep those together, I don't think you can really go wrong when it comes to painting a scheme. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure as always. I've been Hannes. This has been Painting by Letters and keep safe out there.